Yo, what is up guys? Lonky Dushi, hopefully you guys are doing well and welcome to my No BS Best Frost Mage Guide for the Season 4 in Dragonflight. In this guide, we're gonna talk about what are the best in slot items and how to get them. It's super important to start the season right. And then I will be talking about the very best stats possible for Frost Mage right now. And then I will be showcasing the full build, explaining how it works showcasing also the pvp talents how they actually synergize with this build and then i will be showcasing you guys the full burst rotation that is going to allow you guys to deal some massive freaking damage i will be including some macros too so keep that in mind all right let's get into it so what are the very best stats for frost mage right now in season 4 dragonflight for pvp pretty simple want to watch lil box stats in best in slot items this dude currently has the highest solo shuffle rating in the whole world 2.6k rating so i mean this dude cannot be wrong about what he's doing right so as for the stats as always, on pretty much 99% of the characters in WoW, you need 30% versatility. You need it. It is a rule of thumb. And then your next best stat is going to be haste. As a frost mage, you need a bunch of haste. So if you can choose a piece that has haste over mastery, pick it up all the time. And then finally, your last stat that you want to go for is mastery around 12 to 15 percent would be super good so keep that in mind versatility 30 percent haste as much as you can and then around 12 15 percent mastery would be ideal as for critical strike you want to avoid that stat at all costs okay you don't want critical strike at all as for your best in slot items what do you actually need first is going to be the wayward chronomancers chrono cap but how do you get that piece of tier set it's super easy okay you just need to go into valdraken right here okay, in a pvp area you talk to calderax then you can buy a draconic gladiators silk hat doesn't matter which one you pick because we are going to switch that piece of gear into a piece of tier set i'm going to show you guys exactly how to do it once you actually bought that helm you will need to go from valdraken to tier hold okay in the mountain there's a big palace right then you want to enter it get towards what is called the revival catalyst and then pretty simple you click on it and then you take the helm that you just bought from the conquest vendor you drag it on the green plus sign then you click on transform it is going to transform your piece of conquest into a piece of tier set and then as for your necklace you're gonna need a haste necklace with haste and versatility necklace so remember all gems all enchants you can buy them from the auction house and then next for your shoulders you're gonna need the tier set piece which is called wayward chronomancers metronomes Again, it's going to be the same thing as Wayward Chronomancer's Chrono Cap. You just buy it from the Conquest Vendor, turn it into a tier set. And then as for your cape, you're going to need the Draconic Gladiator's Drape, which is bought from the Conquest Vendor. You want that one with haste on it, with the Homebound Speed Ancient. As for your chest piece, you're going to need the haste and versatility one with the Ancient called waking stats as for your wrists you're gonna need a haste and versatility wrist as for your wrist enchant you need the speed enchant on your wrist for your gloves okay so this becomes a little bit ish tricky but i'm gonna show you how to get those wayward chromancers gloves okay so in this season of dragonflight what you can do to get a free piece of gear of your choice a piece of tier set all you need to do is get 1600 rating in arenas okay two versus two three versus three uh rated bgs or a solo shuffle as soon as you got 1600 rating what you need to do is come over here okay in valdraken right here you will be receiving a mark of mastery for getting to 1600 which you can actually exchange for a piece 
of tier set of your choice. All you need to do I'll is stop to Arastrosa. And then you can go ahead and buy the Wayward Chronomancer's Gloves. Quick heads up, buy your PvP piece from the right column. Because if you buy it from the left column, you will regret it. Those pieces don't scale in PvP combat. And they're going to be worse than if you take your PvP piece from the right side. For your waist, you're going to need a belt that gives you haste and versatility. And then you're going to notice that Bro actually is running with Wayward Chronomancer's pantaloons, which is also awakened, just like the gloves. But what happens now is we cannot get two Mark of Masteries. So the only way to actually get a second piece of awakened gear right now is to kill an awakened raid boss, okay, or loot it from your weekly Great Vault. That's literally the only way to get. So bro I actually got super lucky on that one every week you get one charge at the revival catalyst that allows you to switch one piece of conquest of your choice into a piece of tier set so you're just going to need to wait one extra week and you're also going to be able to get your wayward chronomancer's pantaloons and then once you get those boots you will need the enchant that gives 177 intellect and 131 stam on those pants moving on to vibrant violet cloth slippers why those are best in slots basically it gives you precognition if you don't know what precognition is literally Whenever you are able to juke an entrop, juking means you're casting and then you stop casting and someone tries to entrop you, you will get precognition for four seconds, which is going to make you absolutely immune to all CCs, uh, all entrops, and all cast pushback effects for four seconds. Absolutely the best embellishment for most casters in World of Warcraft. But now you're asking yourself, but how the hell do I get those boots? They're not at the gear vendor. I got you. I got you. That, that is the reason why I make guide videos. To be able to get those boots, you're going to need Trophy of Conquest. How do you get Trophy of Conquest? Pretty simple. All you need to do is do some PvP. You will earn a box, which is called Victorious Contenders Strong Box. Okay, just do a couple games, win a couple games. And then open that box it is going to give you a quest which is called consortiums something i don't remember exactly but as soon as you activate that quest it will ask you to Best talk to call their acts and then you click on complete quest you will then receive your two draconic trophy of conquest which you will use to craft that pair of boots though the only thing that we also need to be able to craft those boots is two splintered sparks of awakening how do you get those again super simple you just go into the pvp area in Valdraken. you talk to militia then she's going to give you a couple of quests that will each uh give you a spark of awakening once you got two of them you then combine them by right clicking on them then it is going to give you a spark of awakening now you got everything needed to go and just craft your piece of gear you're gonna need to go over um this place right here in valdraken which is called the work orders talk to this goblin then type in a search bar vibrant wilder cloth slippers and then click on it uh provide your spark of awakening and then you will put your draconid trophy of conquest and then choose the right embellishment, which is going to be Statuette of the Forcing Power. Try to pick up the three stars one, okay? And then you will choose the stats that you want on your gear, which is going to be Haste and Versatility. So you're going to need to go buy Draconic Missive of the Aurora. On top of that, those ingredients here too, uh, the Statuette from the Auction House, and then you will bring all those ingredients right here and you will be able to craft your boots which you will receive by mail shortly later as for the rings pretty simple bro actually went for two rings with haste one ring from the honor vendor and then the other ring 
bro actually bought it from the auction house and keep in mind you can actually put a haste gem on the one you can buy from the auction house on top of that bro actually puts haste enchants on his rings as for your trinkets you're gonna need draconic aspirants medallion please pick that one and not adaptation please and then you're gonna need draconic aspirants insignia of alacrity so far from what i'm gathering it's always the best offensive trinket because it procs way often it doesn't proc when you want it to be but it actually procs way more often than the one minute counterpart now that we spoke about the very best in slot stats for frost mage in season four we spoke about what are the best in slots items possible to get right now we're gonna jump straight into the talent section let's jump straight into the talents all right so it is going to be pretty simple i'm going to keep it very very short what you guys need to understand is that we're playing glacial spike because the tier set actually forces us into playing glacial spike and it would be a loss to not play it so and then we're playing with cryopathy basically what it says is whenever you activate your icy veins which is your big big cooldown it is going to give you max damage on your next ray of frost cryo patty is literally where the big one shots come from with your ray of frost i'm going to show you guys a little bit later right so let's move on towards comet storm comet storm is going to be a global that you press whenever you don't have anything when your targets are all frozen in place and it is going to deal exceptional damage for ability that is free of cost of course we're playing with ray of frost because it deals massive wombo damage we're playing with hailstones basically what it does every time you cast ice lands on frozen targets it has a hundred percent chance to generate an icicle and you want to build those icicles as fast as possible because it is going to allow you guys to spam those big big 500 600k glacial spikes so with that being said we're playing with freezing winds whenever you use frozen orb you gain fingers of frost every three seconds allowing you to benefit from hailstones way way easier right and then what's really cool about freezing rain is the fact that whenever you use a frozen orb i'm gonna show you guys a cool macro for frozen orb by the way it makes your next blizzard your next two blizzards in fact instant cast it increases its damage we don't really care about its damage we are more so care about the fact that it's perma rooting everything and as a frost mage you need to understand that ruining your target it's almost as good as dealing damage basically that's literally frost mage then all of your root effects with your blizzard and your frozen orb actually comes from frostbite gives your chill effects a 10 percent chance to freeze the target for four seconds it is basically always triggering whenever your enemies step into your frozen orb or your blizzard as for the left side of the tree, it's pretty simple. Nothing has changed since season three. So you're gonna notice that we're not actually putting any point into cryo freeze. And the reason being is in arenas, you're not supposed to spend the whole match inside your ice block, okay? Whenever you ice block, your healer is supposed to have the responsibility to pick you back up, to heal you back to full during that time, okay? So we're not investing any point into cryo freeze if you absolutely want to go cryo freeze i would say pick one point from tome on the ronin and one point from tempest barrier invest them into cryo freeze and mirror image and then you will be able to heal inside your ice blood of course and solo queue rbgs or rbgs or bgs or epic bgs cryo freeze is going to be much much better as for your pvp talents okay we are playing with concentrated coolness the reason why is whenever you use frozen orb you are actually activating it from super far away instantly and it actually deals more damage that's the reason why we're actually playing with that pvp talent and then frost bomb frost bomb is your big cheesy one-shot mechanic though though keep in mind it can be dispelled so keep that in mind but it is pretty much your best pvp talent option right now for frost mage 
Though, keep in mind that your Frost Bomb needs to shatter an enemy to deal maximum damage. How do you shatter an enemy? Pretty simple. You got multiple ways to do it. Okay, we're going to use it right now. You can always use Flurry on your target and see, bam, it's going to shatter. Okay, again, another way to actually cause a shatter is to get your frost bomb up and as it will blow up you use frost nova bam you shatter once again and then your other way that you can actually shatter is whenever you're gonna use your frost bomb at the very last second when it actually is about to blow up you use ice nova right now bam it actually shatters once more and then that's literally how you can cause shatters on your enemies there are other ways. I'm going to show you guys another way right here. Hold on. Give me a second. All right. Just building icicles. Another way that you can actually cause a shatter is just by uh, applying your bomb using a glacial spike right as it is about to explode. Then you shatter your target once again. If you don't shatter, you won't deal any damage with your ice bomb. Period. And finally, we're actually playing with Mastered Shepherd. Why this is so good is basically whenever you're able to cast a polymorph, let's say, on an enemy healer, as you should, then for the whole duration of your polymorph, okay, you will be moving at 25% increased speed and you will be dealing 12% more damage, okay, because it increases your versatility by 12 percent so it boosts your damage by 12 percent on top of that it makes you a little bit more tanky because versatility increases your defense all right so let's get into the full burst rotation guys i cannot wait to show you let's go that was some kind of great burst man Ooh, that was a nice hit dude Okay, we got another win. Oh, 700k! 750k! No way, bro. You shatter. Reset. Woo! That was some massive freaking damage, bro. Little spike. We explode everything. Then at this point, you're kind of spamming those uh, frostbolt, of course. You're waiting for your frozen orb. Oh, we can use our big, big bomb of ice. I'm gonna keep my shatter once more for my bomb. Yes. And at this point, we're kind of running out of everything because what happens right now is we don't have the full tier set, okay? So every time with the tier set that you use your glacial spike, you're supposed to have a 40% chance to get your flurry, which I did not get because I don't have the full tier set i only have like two pieces so if i had the full tier set i would have been able to deal more shatter damage because i literally ran out of flurry to press okay anyhow our glacial spike hitting for <laughs> almost 800k okay may i need to remind you guys that my health pool is like 1 million health right now 1.2 million health <laughs> that's more than 70% uh, of someone's health and one key <laughs> that's pretty dumb then our frost bomb hitting for 524k absolutely bonkers again if you cannot shatter the frost bomb you will deal somewhat like 70k 120k damage with your frost bomb so super important Again, your Ray of Frost hitting for 387k a tick, dude. That is dumb. That is that is dumb. So, again, it can be dispelled. It can be um, a stop. People would try to interrupt your Ray of Frost. So, keep that in mind. But if you can pull that off, you're going to one-shot some people for sure. Ice Lance being 12% of our total damage, which is not bad because it's all instants. Remember, if you cannot cast anything, just press your frozen orb into Iceland spam until you can nail a polymorph and then you can unleash your big burst frost bomb into flurry, into trinket, icy veins, uh, ray of frost into comet storm. All right. So uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of curious. Uh, Comet Storm hitting for 477k. Not bad. I think we used it twice, if I can remember correctly. 
you actually need to use that ability on cooldown whenever you have flurry active on your target also so hopefully guys enjoyed this uh, presentation if you want me to do more stuff like that for every character let me know down in the comment section which character you want me to cover up next let's talk about the macros now all right so let's talk about my favorite macro by far okay this is a hover macro usually whenever you want to use frozen orb you need to use the ability your keybind for your frozen orb and then you have to choose the location with your green marker and i feel like it's super lame okay my macro wherever i actually aim my mouse when i press my macro bam frozen orb same thing for my blizzard it is absolutely so much freaking faster than having to use your frozen orb click on the ground click on your blizzard click on the ground like i hate it i hate it and i feel like those macros are absolutely needed for frost mage i will be linking those macros down in the description so don't worry i feel like those macros are so good because you can actually like chain cast your frozen orb into a blizzard and it's so much faster as for the last macro it works super well if you're playing a human or if you're actually playing with a draconic aspirants badge of ferocity the reason being is whenever you use my macro which should replace your icy vein ability it will use icy vein and then it's going to use your one minute offensive trinket and on top of that it will use a salt water potion just keep in mind though salt water potions do not work in Valdraken, they don't work in rated PvP, they only work in epic BGs, random BGs, but you will be increasing your damage by 30% if you actually buy saltwater potions from the um, auction house, okay? It's totally worth it, it's only a couple of gold, so... Again, on the PvP dummy where I've showcased the full versatation, I was not able to use a saltwater potion because it is only usable in BGs or epic BGs, okay? I just want to point that out because some people actually told me, oh, but you're doing the whole versatation and using saltwater potions. I can't. You cannot use them outside of random BGs and epic BGs. So if I were... To use my saltwater potion do you remember that 748k glacial spike if i actually used a saltwater potion i would have dealt 30 percent more damage with that glacial spike in all my damage so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video if you did please hit the subscribe button the bell button to not miss out on those great upcoming builds that i will release as the weeks go on in Dragonflight. And thanks a lot for watching. Hopefully you guys have a fantastic day. And a lot of fun with Frostmage. This was Clunky Video. And stay awesome, Jim.